This video is brought to you by the 3 Minute Board Game Patrons. Keep us independent by supporting us on Patreon. Kia ora and welcome to Frosthaven in about 3 minutes, review copy used. It has a solo mode. It's a game for wonderful players. Playing time is medium per encounter or crazy long for the campaign, and it's a very complex game. You are a group of adventurers who have arrived in the isolated town of Frosthaven. Can you help the township prosper and thrive in the face of a rising darkness? Frosthaven is a massive campaign, but it's made up of scenarios which each have their own objectives. Semi-cooperative. Each player is working together to defeat the monsters, but each has their own personal goals. Card management. Your cards represent your powers, but also your energy. Character development. Characters get better gear and skills throughout the campaign. Player turn. Check which scenario you are up to. Find the numbered entry in the scenario book and set up the map as shown in the diagram. Each player has a character with a limited deck of cards, a model, a dial to track health and experience, and equipment and personal goals. On your turn you will select two cards to play. One card will be the leading card and its initiative score will determine when you act. When you act, you can use the top of one card and the bottom of the other, and you can choose freely. In this case, we will use pincer movement because the enemy is between us and an ally. We attack for 5 base damage. You then turn over cards from your attack modifier deck and apply the results. These can be positives, negatives, or even misses. Used cards go in the discard pile, unless they have this icon, in which case they go in your lost pile. Lost cards cannot normally be reclaimed during the game. There are loads of potential effects, including ongoing buffs, area effect attacks, summons, heals, and special movement. And a card can always be used for 2 melee attack or 2 movement. Monsters can have their own action decks, stats, and modifier deck. Monsters can be regular or elites, with elites frequently having special powers. If you are damaged by an attack, you can take it as damage on your dial, or burn a card from your hand or two from your discard. If you ever run out of health or cards, you are defeated. You can rest to regain your discards, but you will have to burn a card each time you do so. Elements also have an impact on play. Some cards will show an elemental icon, and when they do, you advance that element right. Elements can also be spent by cards for bonuses. This one uses wind here to get extra effects. When enemies are defeated, they drop a loot marker. This can be picked up for a card from the loot deck. You collect these by ending your turn on them or by using a loot card. After a mission is complete, you conduct an outpost turn. This can involve you spending loot to build new structures in Frosthaven. And through the campaign, you will build even bigger ones. Why would you like this game? One thing I said about Gloomhaven was that it was almost too much game, and Frosthaven is Gloomhaven but extra. The tactical combat and decision making with its excellent card play returns, but based on my limited plays it's even more intense as the classes in Frosthaven are more unique and interesting than the starter ones in Gloomhaven. And I think that's the key to whether Frosthaven is the right game for you. Not the extra missions, the settlement building or the narrative, but whether the new classes grab you and make you intrigued. And some of the ones I were trying were simply neato, like the Death Walker and the Blink Blade, and there are 13 more classes I haven't even looked at. There's a bunch of small rules tweaks to smooth out and improve the flow of the game, and all up, a very intricate and involved game that will give back what you put in. The best thing about this game is its ambition. Trying to outdo a monster hit game and succeeding is something special. However, Frosthaven requires a serious commitment, both in financial terms and the amount of time you'll spend on it. It's a game that needs to dominate your table for the better part of a year, lest it not be worth picking up. If this looks daunting, try Jaws of the Lion first. And for the original, here's Gloomhaven. Frosthaven. It's a gold medal game, but is it too much of a good thing? And if you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, like, share, and subscribe to the channel.